Hi there, well I'd really like to thank everybody for the help and support and advice provided since my last video and in particular to carburation because I know nothing about carburation to be honest and uh, I got loads of different suggestions and uh, all sort of roughly in, in the same ballpark in terms of the size of carb that I need to be looking for and I reckon that the carb, the carb needs to have a Venturi around about 7.5 millimetres in diameter and the one I've got, this OS21, is 5.4, so it's on the small side. So I think what I'll do is I'll, I'll keep an eye open for a sort of a relatively cheap 7.5mm one, or thereabouts. And if I can't get an older one, I think I'll uh, just put this OS21 on and uh, just see if I can get it to run. And uh, also, I've received the um, twin ignition unit, um, the V-twin. From just engines. So hopefully that will work out okay and uh, in this video I'm going to complete the valve train. So when lapping the valves I uh, obviously mark the valves up to make sure I don't get them in the wrong hole and uh, I use this uh, lapping paste from uh, Muller Roder 500 grit that seems to work quite well. So to lap the valves, I use this chuck off the lathe, hold a stem in it and uh, put them, some lapping paste under the valve, go like that, turn the chuck a little bit, go again and again and keep on repeating this for quite some time and I always find it uh, nice to put a bit of soothing music on and this is a track that my daughter Beth has just released for Christmas and it's one of my favourites. So I've just made this uh, little compression tester attached to my uh, compressor and just bolted on um, got a paper gasket there and uh, the idea is just to put some uh, air into it and as you can hear there's a lot of air escaping mainly out of this one I think Number two. So a bit more work needed on lapping. Well, for number two valve, um, I decided to use this uh, Chemico fine paste, and uh, I followed it up with a 500 grit. And this is currently uh, under pressure, uh, 30 psi, and uh, I think it sorted it. Can't hear any uh, air leaking anywhere. So I'm happy with that. And for those who are interested, that's the uh, little fixture I made for uh, compression testing. Nothing to it really. That's just a bit of gasket paper. So the rocker arms are held onto the uh, cylinder head with a rocker arm perch and uh, obviously there's two of them, one per cylinder head and that's uh, sort of roughly the drawing uh, so first of all what I'll do is I'll uh, drill through here uh, with a 964 drill bit so this is pretty much basic machining and this needs to be 6 UNC clear this 3.5 millimeter drill bit well sometimes the simplest of machining tests don't work out um, 
can you believe that the centre drill broke and it's uh, left the tip in there and I just can't drill through that so I've drilled another hole there now this bit here is going to be machined out hopefully so I might just get away with it so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, put these uh, in the four jaw chuck on the lathe and then turn this end round so to centre on the hole I've just put this uh, 964 drill bit in and put the gauge on it so that looks pretty good it's going to be one of those days Well I thought it would be a close call and you can see a little nick there uh, but I'll have to see how, how it looks on the engine that one's turned out alright so the rocker arms are made out of four pieces of a quarter of an inch square mild steel bar and uh, on the lathe I've already sort of faced these ends and then I cut them roughly to size on the bandsaw so I think what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to uh, probably super glue them together like that and then put them on the mill and then uh, in one sort of process uh, mill these down to uh, size 1.475 of an inch. So I think first of all I'll drill and ream this hole an eighth of an inch there. I'm going to try and do all four in one go. Fingers crossed I won't get any run out. Well that sort of worked out okay. So what I'll do now is I'll put it back on the milling machine and I'll remove uh, this section here and try and get a bit of an angle on this section here. So now I need to cut a little bit off at an angle to create the um, sort of area that's going to engage with the valve stem. Uh, 
and now I need to do something similar on this corner but I'll do that bit off camera. Well that seems to go okay and there's just a bit of filing to be done now to uh, make them a bit prettier. Just need a bit of hand filing here and there and uh, these shafts they need little e-clips fixing to them so I'll start, try and do that off camera and uh, then it'll be on to the uh, push rods. So the push rods are fairly simple affairs, um, 3.8 inches long, uh, this end uh, tapped uh, 4x4 to UNC to a depth of 3 eighths of an inch and this end reamed to um, an eighth of an inch for a depth of half an inch. Well, I've already centre drilled and I think I mentioned earlier that my uh, eighth of an inch reamer is hand reamer so it's tapered so it's no good for this so I've got this eighth of an inch stub drill so hopefully this will be okay. And here I'm just tapping for before to UNC on the other end. So now there's a requirement to make some pins that slot into the rods and uh, these have got a hemisphere on the end and I'll just show you how I do that. So I just use this little round insert I just do it by eye but um, I think it's good enough. So now there's a requirement to make an adjustable tip for the other end. Very similar to the other end but uh, this just needs some uh, 4x40 thread cutting on it. So the thread needs to be about half an inch in length. OK so it seems to turn out pretty well and I've had a go at um, doing the valve timing and uh, put this in here and feel the top of the piston and feel there uh, just a uh, top of stroke and you can see the uh, inlet port carburation just opening up, drawing the fuel in, getting to the bottom, closing the valve, coming up to the top, compression stroke, there it will fire. And you won't be able to see that on here, but uh, that's the number one magnet, I think, at that position. It'll come round and then get into the bottom, exhaust opens, come back to the top and the uh, inlet will open. So that's the full cycle, the four cycles. Now bearing in mind that this is just going to start on the drawing in the fuel bit on this cylinder here. Not too sure where we are on this one. We're coming up to top of stroke. So I'm guessing that this position here will be firing stroke top. And you can see here, I mean you probably can't see it, but the other hole for the other magnet is just appearing in that position as well. So that sound that seems to be right. So on the firing stroke, comes down. Exhaust opens, up to the top, exhaust closes and the inlet opens, sucks in fuel, down to the bottom, inlet closes, compression stroke, and fire. So uh, I, I think the valve timing is pretty close there and 
and uh, so far I'm happy with the results. And I also get good compression. Put my finger over the um, spark plug hole. You can feel the compression there. That's me stopping it. And on this one, again, feel the compression. So uh, I think it's looking okay. Well this little engine is starting to look like an engine now and uh, one thing I didn't mention was I decided to put weaker springs on the uh, valves. Uh, the I've made two different types of springs in my previous video, a strong one and a weak one. And I think the weak one suits the, the um, engine uh, better and it fits closer to the drawing spec. Um, but it seems to function okay so far. And uh, in my next video I'll be looking at ignition and carburation and you never know uh, if I'm lucky enough I might even get a first run. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope to see you later.